The director at the zoological gardens had shown himself to be an upstart. He regarded his animals simply as stepping stones on the road of his own career. He was indifferent to the educational importance of his establishment. In his zoo, the giraffe had a short neck, the badger had no burrow, and the whistlers, having lost all interest, whistled rarely and with some reluctance. These shortcomings should not have been allowed, especially as the zoo was often visited by parties of school children. The zoo was in a provincial town, and it was short of some of the most important animals, among them the elephant. Three thousand rabbits were a poor substitute for the noble giant. However, as our country developed, the gaps were being filled in a well-planned manner. On the occasion of the anniversary of the liberation, on 22nd July, the zoo was notified that it had at long last been allocated an elephant. All the staff, who were devoted to their work, rejoiced at this news. All the greater was their surprise when they learned that the director had sent a letter to Warsaw renouncing the allocation and putting forward a plan for obtaining an elephant by more economic means. I, and all the staff, he had written, are fully aware how heavy a burden falls upon the shoulders of the Polish miners and foundrymen because of the elephant. Desirous of reducing our costs, I suggest that the elephant mentioned in your communication should be replaced by one of our own procurement. We can make an elephant out of rubber, of the correct size, fill it with air, and place it behind railings. It will be carefully painted the correct color, and even on close inspection will be indistinguishable from the real animal. It is well known that the elephant is a sluggish animal, and it does not run and jump about. In the notice on the railings we can state that this particular elephant is particularly sluggish. The money saved in this way can be turned to the purchase of a jet plane, or the conservation of some church monument. Kindly note that both the idea and its execution are my modest contribution to the common task and struggle. I am, etc. This communication must have reached a soulless individual who regarded his duties in a purely bureaucratic manner and did not examine the heart of the matter, but, following only the directive about reduction of expenditure, accepted the director's plan. On hearing the ministry's approval, the director issued instructions for making of the rubber elephant. The carcass was to have been filled with air by two keepers blowing into it from opposite ends. To keep the operation secret, the work was to be completed during the night, because the people of the town, having heard that an elephant was joining the zoo, were anxious to see it. The director insisted on haste also, because he expected a bonus, should his idea turn out to be a success. The two keepers locked themselves in a shed, normally housing a workshop, and began to blow. After two hours of hard blowing, they discovered that the rubber skin had risen only a few inches above the floor, and its bulge in no way resembled an elephant. The night progressed. Outside, human voices were stilled, and the, only the cry of the jackass interrupted the silence. Exhausted, the keepers stopped blowing and made sure that the air already inside the elephant should not escape. They were not young and were unaccustomed to this kind of work. If we go on at this rate, said one of them, we shan't finish by morning. And what am I to tell my missus? She'll never believe me if I say that I spent the night blowing up an elephant. Quite right, agreed the second keeper. Blowing up an elephant is not an everyday job. It's all because our director is a leftist. They resumed their blowing but after another half hour they felt too tired to continue. The bulge on the floor was larger, but still nothing like the shape of an elephant. It's getting harder all the time, said the first keeper. It's an uphill job, all right, agreed the second. Well, let's have a little rest. While they were resting, one of them noticed a gas pipe ending in a valve. Could they not fill the elephant with gas? He suggested it to his mate. They decided to try. 
They connected the elephant to the gas pipe, turned the valve, and to their joy, in a few minutes, there was a full sized beast standing in the shed. It looked real. The enormous body, legs like columns, huge ears, and the inevitable trunk. Driven by ambition, the director had made sure of having in his zoo a very large elephant indeed. First class, declared the keeper, who had the idea of using gas. Now we can go home. In the morning, the elephant was moved to a special run in a central position, next to the monkey cage. Placed in front of a large real rock, it looked fierce and magnificent. A big notice proclaimed, particularly sluggish, hardly moves. Among the first visitors that morning was a party of children from the local school. The teacher in charge of them was planning to give them an object lesson about the elephant. He halted the group in front of the animal and began. The elephant is a herbivorous animal. By means of its trunk, it pulls out young trees and eats their leaves. The children were looking at the elephant with enraptured admiration. They were waiting for it to pull out a young tree, but the beast stood still behind its railings. The elephant is a direct descendant of the now extinct mammoth. It's not surprising, therefore, that it's the largest living land animal. The more conscientious pupils were making notes. Only the whale is heavier than the elephant. But then the whale lives in the sea. We can safely say that on land the elephant reigns supreme. A slight breeze moved the branches of the trees in the zoo. The weight of a fully grown elephant is between nine and thirteen thousand pounds. At that moment, the elephant shuddered and rose in the air. For a few seconds, it stayed just above the ground, but a gust of wind blew it upward until its mighty silhouette was against the sky. For a short while, people on the ground could see the four circles of its feet, its bulging belly, and the trunk. But soon, propelled by the wind, the elephant sailed above the fence and disappeared above the treetops. Astonished monkeys in the cage continued staring into the sky. They found the elephant in the neighboring botanical gardens. It had landed on a cactus and punctured its rubber hide. The school children who had witnessed the scene in the zoo soon started neglecting their studies and turned into hooligans. It is reported that they drink liquor and break windows. And they no longer believe in elephants.